Welcome to episode 23 of the Fibre Bound podcast. Welcome back everyone. It has been quite some weeks since I have had a chance to sit down and speak with you and oh my gosh I have so much to share with you so make sure you grab yourself a beverage. I am drinking a coffee today in my brand new mug by Emma Bridgewater. Easter themed because we are less than a week away from Easter now. It is Sunday the 24th of March and I have been busy. Now let me introduce myself first. My name is Alexandra. This is the Fibre Bound podcast. If you've not been here before this is a place where I talk about all of my knitting, some crochet and sometimes a little bit of sewing too and I have some plans today that I will share with you about that and I like to share these things because I am obsessed with knitting in particular and just generally anything fiber related. I have not tried spinning yet, maybe one day. <laughs> I feel like there's not enough time, not enough hours in the day to be able to do all of the things that I would like to do. Who's with me? <laughs> so hopefully you are all ready with your project or your washing, or your dinner preparations, whenever it is that you get a chance to watch this. And I am looking forward to sharing everything with you today. I have quite a few finished objects, some of which I no longer have in my possession, but I have tried to be proactive and taken some video footage of some of them before I gifted them. And I have a couple of whips to share with you and some acquisitions as well. It has been an exciting few weeks of making and everything knitting related around here lately. Uh, I had the pleasure at the start of the month to host a really good friend of mine who visited me from Sydney and we had an amazing weekend and I'll share some details about that later. Uh, but I have been meaning to record since she left and she left over three weeks ago now. <laughs> And it's just been one thing after another. So yeah, there's a bit to cover today, but that's okay. Hopefully uh, this just gives you an opportunity to knit for a little bit longer. Now, just as a precursor, I am trying a different setting on my camera today. I wasn't very happy with my camera settings last episode. There were some focusing issues. So hopefully this works out okay. I will have to review it later and hopefully it's all right. So let's get started with finished objects. Have I said all of the things that I need to say? I'm going to be all over the place today, I apologize. So let's start with finished objects. Now, the first one that I'll talk about is the one that I am wearing because I am so excited about this finished object. It is the first Colorwork sweater that I have knit in quite some years. It is a test knit that I finished for Anina Yuti from Ani Yuti Knits, an amazing Finnish knitwear designer and I am so happy with it. I finally got to try it on yesterday because it was cool enough to do so. It has been very hot here and it just it's fitting me pretty much exactly how I want it to despite some issues that I had with gauge which was a me problem not a pattern problem. <laughs> So let's talk about this one. Uh, last time I showed it to you in the last episode, I think I was about maybe halfway through the yoke. I think I was about here. So since I saw you last, I finished two sleeves. I finished the body. I might stand up just to show you. I do apologize if my camera is blowing things out today. I have tried some new settings, but we will see how it goes. Now this pattern is written for a DK weight yarn and I just wanted to show you the yarn I used before I talk about the actual sweater itself. So these are some of my leftovers. For my contrast colour I used this natural tweed which was just beautiful to work with. This was left over from a sweater that I knit a couple of years ago and I really love this yarn. So the main colour was actually, it's got so many tags in it, it was called Old Rose and it is again on the Bendigo Tweed base. This is a 75% wool, 15% net fibre and 10% bamboo blend. Think of the words. 
and it is really lovely. Um, Bendigo Woolen Mills is an Australian woolen mill. I think I talked about this in the last episode and they have released this tweed yarn a couple of years in a row now and over the various years I've picked up different colorways and I feel, felt like these just went together so nicely and I'm really happy with how they've knit up. Uh, now I don't think I've mentioned the pattern name this is the Amidala sweater and it is written for DK weight yarn or light worsted. It is a color work top down yoke design and it, you start it at the neck band where there are a few short rows. You work through the color work chart and you split for the sleeves and put the sleeves on hold while you knit the body and I think there are a few more short rows that are included after the sleeve separation which I did do. I don't recall. I think they're optional and then you finish the body and knit two sleeves basically now this sweater didn't take me a very long time to knit at all i started this one on the 1st of february i finished it on the 10th of march so it took me around six weeks six to seven weeks to knit this which you know is not too bad for a color work sweater and when I'm also working on other projects and working full-time so I'm pretty happy with that I do find test knits to be amazing for motivating me to actually get sweaters finished quickly if it's not a test knit sweater it's likely to linger for a little bit longer because I start prioritizing other projects whereas when it's a test knit this is my pure focus for that period. It was an extremely enjoyable project to knit on. Um, I found that my tension uh, changed a little bit from my swatch in the yoke in particular, where I did the stranded color work. I found it impacted my row gauge more than it did my stitch gauge, uh, which I made some adjustments because of that. Luckily, this pattern gives you some places where you can make those changes uh, and I do find that it still fits really well even though my uh, yoke depth is maybe half an inch to an inch deeper than is intended in the pattern. I think it still sits quite well. When I lift my arms it doesn't tend to completely lift up <laughs> and I feel like I could definitely wear it under a jacket or a coat if when it cools down here as well. So I am really happy with that. Uh, so that was my main adjustment to um, adjust how many rows I did after the color work chart before I did the sleeve separation just because of my own gauge there. This is what happens I think for me when I haven't knit color work in a long time. Um, my tension struggles a little bit to stay consistent and the swatch to big project transition is definitely a thing that I see when I do color work knitting. My swatch was basically perfect <laughs> to the row gauge and then when I started knitting the actual project it just loosened up and I think that's just a factor of having more stitches on the needle uh, and, and it's just a me thing. When I knit my stranded color work I uh, knit it in my I knit continental and I hold both yarns in my left hand uh, sort of draped both colors draped over my finger and pick the color that I need to knit next and sometimes I get a bit loose when I do that I think it still worked out fine I think it fits me really well and I'm really happy with it so no problems there now the sleeves are picked up once the body is finished and they are knit in the round uh, there are decreases that go down the sleeve and Anina gives both measurements as well as the number of sleeve decreases in the pattern and again my row gauge was a little bit off here compared to my swatch so I did um, omit one repeat on the sleeve decreases uh, to make sure my sleeve didn't end up being too long and it worked out perfectly i think my sleeves are just the right length um yeah there's no excess fabric ex excess fabric here which is great uh what else can i say about this pattern i knit this on the recommended needles that are uh, outlined in the pattern so i think it was a 3.5 a 3.25 and a four millimeter 
I think they were the needle sizes. I have all, the, all of the details in my project page on Ravelry, which will be linked below as well. And yeah, it was an absolutely amazing test. I am so happy with my finished object. I cannot wait for it to cool down so I can wear it. I'm actually getting a little hot in it right now. It's probably not cold enough to wear it right now, but I just thought I'd wear it for this episode because I love it and we'll see how far I can get into the episode before I get too hot. <laughs> so that's finished object number one. Now oh, in terms of release date I believe this pattern will be out on Wednesday the 27th of March. This episode may or may not be out by then. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go with editing time. Today is Sunday and uh, I work during the week so if it has been released then obviously please go check it out and if it hasn't then I will still pop a link to my project page and you'll be able to get to the pattern once it's released from there. <laughs> I'm feeling very rusty today. I am using this pattern as an entry into a knit along as well so a few knit alongs. Selma from Little Big Knits is currently hosting the Nordic Cal our knit along so I will be submitting this as part of that knit along because it is designed by um, Anina who is from Finland and she's um, a Nordic designer and that knit along ends on the 31st of March this year. So if you've knit anything from a Nordic pattern, then definitely, or Nordic yarn I think as well is eligible for entries, then you can enter that knit along as well. Uh, I believe that there's a, there's a hashtag, LBK Nordic Cal, which I'll put on the screen. And I think there may also be a Ravelry group. But check out Selma Little Big Knits podcast for more details about that one. Um, it is also eligible for the Made From Stash 2024 cowl from Midwest Stitches. I purchased this yarn either last year or the year before. The main colour, the contrast colour was purchased quite some years ago, probably about three three, four years ago now. So this is eligible for that knit along. And it is also eligible for the Use Your Stash Mail that is being run by Rose Opal Knits as well. So Erica and Daphne are hosting that on their Discord channel right now. And I will pop a link to their podcast in my description box as well. So yeah, lots of knit alongs which help to inspire me, which is great. The next project that I will share with you is a cast on that I had from mid-2023 and it was for the Sock Week Mal or Cal, but hosted by Nitty Natty or Love in Stitches podcast. And I finished these at the start of February or mid-February. It was after I recorded my last episode. So these are my amazing enchanted socks that I finished as part of that make-along. I obviously was not successful in meeting the requirements of that make-along. I don't think I even finished one sock in that period, but they are beautiful. I am so happy with how these turned out. Now I used Obsession Yarns yarn for, this, for these socks. This is in the Enchanted sock set, which had a main color of this beautiful variegated yarn and then a mini of this darker deep sea greeny navy color, which I absolutely love the combination of these two yarns. I think they just are so perfect together. Now for this pair of socks, these are socks for me and I cast on on a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is the sock, sock needles that I use for all of my fingering weight socks. And I cast on 56 stitches. I did a one by one rib for the cuff. And I think I did that for only about 15 rounds, maybe not quite even. I actually wanted to get these socks off the needles quickly so I maybe made them a little bit shorter than I usually would. And then when I got to the main leg of the sock I decided to do a slip stitch pattern. I didn't follow a pattern for this, I sort of made it up. So I knit three, slipped one every second round and then every other alternate round was just a knit round 
um, so it just created this little uh, texture or a little bit of detail and interest in the socks which I think looks really cute um, yeah it was a fun knit it was actually really lovely I'm not quite sure why it took me so long to finish these I did enjoy knitting on them when I did uh, I guess other things just took precedence in my knitting time but these were really lovely to knit up uh, for the heel I just did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and then I did a rounded toe in the contrast yarn as well and these are beautiful now that I've shown you I can actually wear them <laughs> but yeah they were really lovely and a good knit and really beautiful yarn so obsession yarns are an Australian dyer really great project to finish off of the needles one of my 2023 cast-ons <laughs> So these were the first pair of socks that I finished in February, although they were started in 2023. Now my February socks were actually finished at the start of March. But I decided to start these quite late in the month. I think it was the 21st of February that I started them. And my intention for these socks is that they were going to be a gift and they still will be. I just don't want to say too much about for whom because they may or may not be watching. <laughs> But um, I wanted it to be a quick knit and the reason why I wanted it to be a quick knit was because I was going to see this person and I wanted to gift it to them pretty soon but I did not quite make it in time so I will be gifting this to the, to the recipient when I see them next uh, but these are my February socks <laughs> So I'll explain the yarns I used in just a moment. Wow, I feel like this is really blown out today. So I actually held two yarns double to knit these socks up to form a DK weight gauge. So these were knit on a 3.25 millimeter needle, which is the needle that I prefer for DK weight socks. I use the Crazy Sock Ladies DK Vanilla DK weight vanilla sock pattern to guide my DK weight sock knitting and for these ones I think I cast on a size between a small and a medium so the small I think casts on 40 stitches and the medium casts on 48 and I think I did these as a 44 stitch count the reason being that I just find the 48s are a little bit too big for who I was knitting these for I would do a 48 for my husband for example but yeah I wanted a size in between my size and my husband's size so I made a bit of an adjustment there and did the 44 stitches for this one I did a 2x2 two two rib for the cuff I've taken all of my stitch markers off and I think that I did around 50 rounds for the leg did a heel flap and gusset and then around I think it was around 55 rounds for the foot from memory, maybe 60 rounds and a rounded toe as written in the pattern with that slight modification for the, the smaller number of stitches between the medium and the small sizes. Wow, words. Uh, so yeah, this was a really quick knit. I actually did knit this really fast. I was knitting these on my Addy Crazy Trio needles and it was flying off my needles, it was great. And then I went to a winery and lost one of my needles. Don't recommend those needles if you've had a few drinks. <laughs> because I ended up leaving one on the picnic blanket at the winery, but that's okay, it is what it is. I had plenty of other needles I could uh, go to when I came home, so I did finish them off on a chow goo 32 inch 3.25 millimeter fixed needle and they turned out great now they have actually been blocked they're ready to be gifted I will just have to wrap them up for my friend when I see her next so yeah these are done and I love them I don't think there's anything else to talk about here except the yarn forgot about the yarn so the yarn I used has fallen on the floor and rolled away from me <laughs> with me okay so the yarn I used was by Finch Yarns and it was old stash yarn that I had from a couple of years ago 
And this is the soft sock base. Colorway is Blackberry Fool, which is 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 400 meters per 100 gram hank, and it is beautiful, an absolutely stunning yarn. However, as I said, I wanted it to be a quick project, so I ended up holding it with some Nundle Woolen Mills Bear yarn. And that gave me the DK weight gauge that I needed for this project. And I still have quite a bit of this yarn left. I actually have a whole nother skein of this. When I bought this, I had intended it to be for a sweater, but when I swatched it, it was a little bit more variegated than I'd expected. And so I have used one of the skeins already for a swap for um, an advent calendar that I did with some friends the other year. And then I still had two skeins left. And the reason why I chose this colorway and again, I'm hoping my friend's not watching this, but um, my friend and I have talked about reminiscing our childhood berry picking when we were kids. And I figured blackberries, I had a yarn in stash that had the word name blackberry in it. So I thought it was perfect for her. Yeah. So that was my second finished object. Third, my second pair of socks as a finished object. And now I'll move on into a couple of other items and I'm just going to group them because I did a few of these. Now I have gotten onto a kick of making pot holders this year, thanks to the inspiration of the Crazy Sock Lady earlier this year. So I think I shared one finished one last episode. Since then I have made three more. So I made another one out of the same yarn that I made the first one with that I showed last time, which has been gifted. And I'll pop um, some B-roll in to show those. But I then also made a couple more. So these are the ones I made in March. I think both of these were in March. And I did make a modification on this one in the way that I seamed it. So for my first one, I'm pretty sure I used, or my first two actually, I think I just used a mattress stitch, whip stitch, whip stitch, to seam up the two sides. Whereas for this one, I used I don't remember what it's called now. I wanted a flatter seam here, so I used, it's a flat seam with single crochet. And I have linked the tutorial I used for this in my Ravelry project page. And I just like how it sits a little bit flatter. The other one felt a little bit too raised for my liking. So I made two of these. And with the leftovers of this yarn, and I did it with the leftovers from my previous ones as well, uh, I made some dishcloths. So these are the two dishcloths that I made this month. The one that I made with the first set has been gifted, and I will pop some B-roll of that, but this is uh, with the leftovers of the same yarn that I used for these two. And now I did use a different yarn this time compared to what I used in the last episode. I ended up using the Organic Cotton by Maker, which is a Limcraft yarn for this one. So this one is more of a true worsted weight yarn compared to the other one, which was very much a DK weight. Out of 100 grams, I got a pot holder and a dishcloth, and I had a little bit left over. So from the two skeins that I had, these are our, these are my leftovers. And I think there's about 10 grams in total left here across the two balls. So I felt like that was a great use of the yarn. It gave me four pieces that will be gifted to a friend. So I will be packaging these up and gifting them as a gift to another friend today. Well, not today. <laughs> this week when I see her and yeah so these are a gift 
and actually they making these has inspired me to pull out the dishcloths that I made a few years ago and actually start using them because I've been making them and have never actually used them so I'm really enjoying using them in my kitchen uh, and yeah it's inspiring me to make more which is fun so that was that and is that all the finished objects no there is one more finished object so the final finished object has been gifted and I did take some footage of it before I gave it to my friend or my colleague and it was the bee stitch hat by Melissa Metzbauer of Metzbauer Knits. This is a free pattern on Ravelry and I knit one of these hats for my niece a few years ago. It was one of the very first projects that I ever knit. Now I used some stash yarn for this project. It was the Spot Saver I believe from Spotlight. 100% acrylic yarn in a pale pink colour and I had some leftovers from a few years ago when I was planning something. Uh, that's right, it was leftovers from a cowl I had made for my niece and I still have quite a bit of that yarn left over so it was really nice to be able to use some of that up. I followed the pattern pretty much exactly except that my gauge was off. So I made some adjustments to account for my gauge. I had aimed for the newborn to, well, the first size and the second size. They don't actually have names for them, uh, but it was basically a newborn to, I think, a three month old size. Had aimed for a size between there. So I made the second size and my gauge allowed me to meet the requirements of that range. So in order to make sure that obviously it was the right length and things like that I did some calculations as well and added extra repeats for certain areas of the hat to make sure that it was the right proportion uh, for the size that it was actually going to end up being. I've got a lot of notes on my Ravelry project page it will be linked down below but this was such a fun project. I started and finished this last Sunday and I gifted it to my colleague on Tuesday just gone and she absolutely adored it. <laughs> I uh, decided to add a pom-pom that I had in stash that I had purchased from Amazon a few years ago. So this was a really great little stash busting project. I used stash yarn, I used a stash pom-pom and again great entry into the um, use your stash mail that Midwest Stitches is currently hosting. Did I say that hashtag correctly? Luckily I have written these down, made from stash 2024 knit along or make along hosted by Midwest Stitches. So I'm very happy to have used some stash yarn for that and to have made a lovely gift for a friend that was really very well received and very well appreciated, very knit worthy recipient there. So that was very exciting to make. Those are all the finished objects. And now I just have a couple of works in progress to talk to you about. So my aim now is to finish a couple of whips before I cast on all the things because I really want to knit so many things this year and there just isn't enough knitting time for me to be able to do that effectively. But the first work in progress that I wanted to talk to you about is the first thing that I picked up once I had finished this sweater test knit because it went on hold while I was working on this because I needed to finish this. <laughs> I am so inspired to keep working on this now that this sweater test knit is done and I have made a little bit of progress since I finished this one a, well, a week ago, two weeks ago now. So I picked up my Radvent cardigan again that I had started back in January and I really whizzed through that first sleeve and got a good start on the second sleeve and then put it down for eight weeks. So this is where I was the last time I showed it to you where my little progress keeper is. I purchased this progress keeper from a homespun house a couple of years ago and it is made by I cannot remember oh if I remember to pop it on the screen I will I my memory leaves me right now but it is actually a Christmas progress keeper it's a little hot chocolate and the reason why I'm using that is because this is an advent project so I have continued on with my second sleeve and so this is where I was when I showed it to you last and I have made this much progress 
I am no longer knitting in the round. I am now knitting on the body. And I am about 30 rounds, rows, away from joining my two sides together. So my last episode I showed both of the sides. Um, I'm not going to bother taking the other side out now because there's not been any change to that. But yeah, this is, this is getting there and I'm so excited. So just to recap, I am knitting this in the Louis and Lola advent calendar that I got in 2023, which I adore. The colors are just phenomenal. Uh, and I really love how this is knitting up and I'm so excited to wear it. And I am knitting it. I didn't quite get gauge on, on the recommended needles, so I sized my needles down. I'm knitting this on a 3.75 millimeter needle. I believe the pattern is written for a four millimeter or a US six. So I'm knitting this on a US five and I am loving it so much. It is such a joy to pull out and work on. Uh, this last couple of weeks have been quite manic at work. So I've only gotten a couple of rows a night if that on it which is why there's not been a whole lot of progress but I'm still pretty happy with that considering I got all of the other projects done and yeah hopefully by the next time I record this will be finished because I just need to do another three colors I think here join it up do the bottom ribbing and the button band and it'll be done it feels like not much knitting to go, but realistically that button band's gonna take me a while to get through. I think it's all twisted rib because it matches the cuff. But I love it, absolutely love it. And I can't wait to wear it. I am trying to figure out what I will do with my leftovers from this uh, advent because I have loved knitting with this so much and I do have or will have quite a bit of yarn left over and I'm considering putting it into another garment actually. Although I have thought about a blanket too. I'm not sure what I'll do with it, we'll get there. I've not made any modifications to this. I'm really excited to keep going with it. Once I join the two sides together, I will make an assessment on whether I modify anything. I do have minor concerns about the length of it, but I'm calculating that it will be around 19 inches long from shoulder to the bottom ribbing and that's probably perfect a bit probably perfect <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes i'll talk about it next time i see you but i have been loving this project if you have an advent calendar that you love the colors of and you want to make a garment this is super satisfying i've been trying to think of garment projects for my advent minis for a long time and i'm so happy that i chose this one there are so many out there obviously to choose from, but the Radvent Cardigan by Amber O'Brien. <sighs> I love it so much. It is just making me so happy. So yes, and dropping all the things. That is my first work in progress that I have made some progress on. And my second work in progress is a brand new one. I cast on some socks for March yesterday. <laughs> I left it late again, but again, I'm using DK weight yarn, so I feel like they're going to go pretty quickly. Uh, we'll see how we go. And I realistically am not needing to meet any deadline for these. Uh, I don't mind if I don't finish them within the month. I'm not entering my own knit along. So just as a reminder as well, I am hosting a knit along at the moment. It is called the Use Your Sock Yarn Mail 2024. It basically encourages you to use sock yarn to knit something each month, if you want to. There's, the rules are pretty flexible. Uh, there's a hashtag that is usable on Instagram, but if you'd like to enter for extra, or have extra entries, then we have some grand prizes um, that will be drawn twice in the year for objects that are finished within a calendar month. So if you start and finish something in a calendar month during 2024, you'll be eligible for the bigger prize drawings, but otherwise it's a participatory make-along on Instagram. My sock yarn that I am using here 
I don't have the tag, I've left it over there. Let me grab that. Okay, the sock yarn I am using for this project is actually new to me sock yarn. I purchased this at the start of March at Fiber Feast, which I will talk about at the end of this episode. Uh, and it is in the colorway The Late Eel by Finch Yarns again. They have been my choice of sock yarn <laughs> this year, apparently. I have a lot of Finch yarns in stash because they are a local to me dyer and I just generally love their yarn and their colorways. So this is the colorway The Late Eel. It is a DK weight sock, 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon and this is it all caked up. There are 225 meters per 100 grams in this ball. And I also purchased a couple of, oops, if my ball's falling apart, I need to fix that up. A couple of contrasting minis to go with this yarn because these socks are for my husband's birthday in April and he loves a long leg. And if I just use 100 grams of DK weight yarn, the leg isn't long enough for him. <laughs> So I purchased a couple of minis to go with it for the cuffs, toes and heels and I have started the first sock yesterday and this is how far we have gotten so far. So I have cast on 48 stitches for him, it's nice and stretchy. I've done a 2x2 two two rib on the cuff there. I think I did that for 14 rounds. And then I just added the main color and I think I've done around 14 rounds of that so far. I am using some little light bulb stitch markers to mark my progress which I love to do on my socks. One, it makes me feel like I'm making progress. Two, it helps me match up the socks and quickly count how many rounds I'm up to at any given point in time. <laughs> so that I can make sure that one sock matches the other sock when I get to it. And I'm knitting these on Chow Gu 3.25 millimeter nine inch circulars at the moment. I do keep a spare set of uh, 32 inch fixed needles in my project bag for when I get to the heel flap and gusset because I do find that's a bit tedious on a nine inch circular uh, but I also do the toes on the longer fixed circular needle as well. Now because I've lost one of my Addy crazy trios obviously that's made it hard to work on those. These have been my preferred sock needles lately but I now only have two out of the three. <laughs> But I have been really enjoying these. Um, they've been really lovely to work with for DK weight socks. I do actually have 2.25 millimeter versions of these as well now. And I think I knit a pair of socks in January on those. They are great because they have one sharp tip. I don't know if that's gonna be visible. And one slightly blunter tip depending on what you prefer. I gravitate towards the sharp tip there. Definitely preferred that side when I knit. Um, but yeah, just, it feels like DPNs, but not as cumbersome as DPNs and kind of like magic loop, but without the moving stitches around the cable. So I do find that this is a lovely way to knit socks or small, small circumference knitting if you have three of them, which I now have two. I do have another set somewhere, I just haven't found them. I haven't really looked for them either, but I knew I had my nine inch circular available, so that's working for me right now. It's a plain stockinette sock, so it's not hurting my hands. If this was patterned, I might to do them on magic loop in lieu of the crazy trios as well. So yeah, that's my last work in progress. My aim is to finish these by mid April, to be honest. My husband's birthday is mid April and he always gets at least one pair of socks a year from me. He's very knit worthy when it comes to socks. 
I mean, the issue being is that he likes the legs super long and he has very big feet, so they take a while to knit, which isn't a problem. I enjoy the knitting, but when I <laughs> want to get something done quickly, sometimes it feels cumbersome, but they, they, they are worth it because he will love them. I am keeping this project in a brand new to me project bag. I believe this is by Shan's Yarns. And it is a beautiful little succulent bag. I picked this up at Fiber Feast as well and I thought it went really well with that yarn <laughs> and it's just really cute. It's a great size to fit in your handbag or yesterday I used it to knit while I was looking after the chickens and it worked out great. So yeah, that is the last of the works in progress that I am actively working on. I am hoping to pick up my Geogradient shawl by Stephen West once I'm feeling a little bit more on top of my projects. I'm just really enjoying my Radvent right now. So that is my main knitting project. And obviously the socks are really good for um, on the go knitting. And the dishcloths and pot holders have been really enjoyable for that uh, kind of thing as well. So I... I'm looking forward to picking that up though. I've been thinking, I don't have it in here. No, it's in the other room. I have been thinking about it pretty much every day. I think to myself, I'll just knit a little bit on my Radvent and then I'll pull out my Geogradient. And then all of a sudden I'm falling asleep on the couch because it's been a really long, exhausting day and I'm relaxed for the evening. So hopefully this month I'll be able to pick that up again. And that is all the knitting content. I have a few acquisitions to share with you today. I mentioned that I'm really enjoying making the pot, pot holders and dishcloths at the moment. So I went a little bit obsessed with buying cotton yarn because I figured these will be great gift projects. And I also, like I said, I'm starting to use my own dishcloths. So if I have more in my stash, that'll be wonderful. So I picked up some extra cotton yarn from Lincraft. The first ones that I picked up were in these two colors. So I picked up a black cotton, which that'll be fun to work with. <laughs> and I also got this peach nectar. So I got these two colorways and I have some plans. I got two balls of each of these. I'm just going to show you one each because otherwise it's balancing. And these are what I actually made those last dish cloths with, this, this brand of yarn. And this is a, an organic cotton, 150 meters per 100 gram ball. I've really enjoyed working with this yarn. They have a really nice selection of colors in their range and I've been really enjoying getting some of these. So this is the first lot that I have. And then I also saw a different type at Lincraft when I was there with my mum recently. And it's the recycled cotton. Again from Lincraft, this is the colorway Natural or 303. Then I also got Charcoal or 102. And this is my favorite one, which I don't think will be a shock to anyone. The name does not really fit the colorway in my mind. I almost don't want to tell you what the colorway is called so that you can guess it and you can be shocked next time, but I'm not going to leave you hanging. If you feel like guessing what this color should be called, feel free to pop that in the comments, but it's called orange. I don't think this is orange. Maybe in certain light, it might look orange. I definitely think it reads more of a dusty pink or a sort of ready pink. I, I, yeah, 
I don't think that I'd call it orange. I may change my mind when I'm editing this and on the screen it might look more orange because actually it's looking much lighter on the screen than it does in real life to me right now. But yeah, I've got these three colours thanks to my mum. She picked them up for me because she lives a lot closer to Lincraft than I do now. And uh, I have two balls of each of these. So they were a fun little stash acquisition that I hope to try out to see if they're any good for these dishcloths. It's a very soft feeling cotton. It is 100%, it says 100% cotton, but it's recycled yarn. So, yep, that's fun. And then I also got my yarnable for February. I think it was February's, yes. Actually, it will say it on here. Yep, February 2024. This arrived at the start of March, I think, or maybe at the end of February. So it's the yarnable. It's called Love is Love. You probably have seen this already because mine always arrives very late, but it's got some beautiful tones in there, beautiful little pinks. It's really, really pretty. This is the plush sock base. It is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, and it's 437 yards per 100 grams. And it's really pretty. So that arrived in the mail. And then I also got some crochet hooks. I finally got my hands on some Etimo crochet hooks. Actually, I think I had last time too, but I bought more. I only have one in the basket here with me. I think I've used the other two, but we have a 3.5 millimeter Etimo crochet hook in the black and gold or gray and gold. They do come in pinks and reds as well, but the sizes I wanted were available in stock in this color and I'm really happy with it. So I got those and I mentioned that I picked up some more crazy trios and the last ones I picked up from Unwind Craft Cafe and they sent me this beautiful card in there with their details and a little note on the back and these are those needles. So the next time I knit a fingering weight sock, I will be using these because I do really enjoy knitting with these. They're much gentler on my hands. Just make sure that I keep track of the fact that I have all three of the needles with me at all times. Don't make the same mistake I made with the other set. <laughs> so that's the start of the acquisitions. I've mentioned that I had a friend, have I mentioned? I, this is the third time I'm recording because I kept either forgetting words or my camera didn't record some parts for some reason. Hopefully this all saves. <sighs> my friend Jane visited me from Sydney. She arrived at the end of February and she was here for the first weekend of March, which was amazing. And so she stayed with us for a few days and we had an amazing weekend. We went to Yarn Trader and did a crochet class with Shelley Husband, such a talented crochet designer and teacher here in Australia. I highly recommend going to one of her classes if you're at all interested in crochet. So while we were there, I did make my first ever granny square, which I didn't count as a finished object because it's just one granny square, but realistically, this is my first ever granny square. And I love it. One of the main reasons why I ordered some crochet hooks last month. Um, so I, we went to that class together. Then we went and did some sightseeing. We went on a wine tour and we also went to Fibre Feast, which was the Adelaide Fibre Festival. And we just had the most amazing weekend together. But when she arrived, she surprised me with some gifts. So Jane is from the Mindful Making podcast. If you have not checked out her podcast, I highly encourage you to do so. Jane is living in Sydney and she designs knitwear and is the fastest knitter that I know. <laughs> 
and an all-round amazing human being. We had the best weekend together. It was just such a joy to spend that time with her. And she stayed with us, she got to meet my family, uh, and it was just a joyous few days. It was very sad to see her go. <laughs> so when she arrived, she gave me some presents. So these are acquisitions. And she gave me one of her amazing project bags. She created this bag with um, stamps, stamps? They're not stamps, I can't think of the word right now, um, that she uh, inherited from, I think, her grandmother. And this is her logo on the back, mindful making. And she also sewed in this amazing lining with a pocket and some little ties. So I've been using this project bag a lot, but I've just taken everything out of it so that I can show it to you because I think it's amazing. So she gifted this to me and I love it so much. She had a matching one and we went around on our wine tour with our matching project bags. We went to Fiber Feast as well with our matching project bags. I absolutely adore this. This is such a lovely gift. So very generous of her. And Jane is also an Australian stockist for Holst Garn. So she was just so generous and she also gave me a ball of my very first Holst Garn. This is the Holst Garn Super Soft in the colorway Oatmeal. It is 100% wool and it is 287 meters to 50 grams. And she also gifted me a pattern for a knit heart that you felt that I will be using this yarn to try out as well. I haven't had a chance to make that yet, but it's on the list of things to do. <laughs> and I am really looking forward to using this and trying it out. I can't wait to, to feel it in my hands and work with this. I'm so excited. I just really wanted to show you first my first ever host. I see more of this in my future. And while we were at Yarn Trader for our workshop, I had received some gift cards from my husband and sons for Christmas for Yarn Trader, which is my local yarn store. And I picked up a couple of project bags while we were there. So whilst these are new acquisitions, um, I didn't pay for them. They were, <laughs> they were gift cards. So I got a little sock bag here. And this collection is in collaboration with Oh Wow Amsterdam bags. So it's Yarn Trader exclusive. And I got this little one and then I also got this big one. The big one has a pocket inside as well. Does the little one have a pocket? No, no pockets in the little one. The big one has some stuff in it at the moment, <laughs> which I'll show you in a minute. But you get a sneak peek now. It's very spacious. It's got some great capacity in there. I do need more sweater bags, which was a good reason to get a big one. And in here, I am also storing my acquisitions from Fiber Feasts. So I'll go through these relatively quickly because there's a little bit in here, but I was very restrained this year, so I'm very happy about that. Um, first thing I'll show you is this amazing little uh, progress keeper or stitch marker set that I picked up from Mavis Handmade. They make one left and make one right because they were just too cute not to get. So I'm really happy with that. So this is Mavis Handmaid's logo. And yeah, it's so fun. So that was one little acquisition. Then I also picked up this amazing mohair by Oyster Yarns. It is a 72% kid mohair, 28% silk and is 420 meters to 50 grams in the colorway camisole. I have plans to knit one of Jane's patterns using this amazing yarn. Uh, she has gifted me the Sarissa shawl pattern as well. So that's going to go into that project once I start that, which hopefully will be as soon as I finish something else on my needles right now. 
I'm very keen to start it. And I also got some Ash and Eve yarns, Ash and Eve Designs yarns from the Yarn Trader stand. These are in the colorway Infallible from the Fade Mystery Club collection. Aren't they pretty? I think I'm going to make a top out of these. That is the plan right now. Maybe a summer tea of some sort. I decided with Jane's and my mum's help to go outside of my comfort zone and get a blue because this is absolutely stunning. Um, if you've been here before, you know I gravitate towards the pinks, the mauves, the neutrals in that way, but this was really pretty and it was really nice to get something that I don't already have in my stash because realistically most of the pinks out there I possibly already have a variation of. Maybe not, maybe not most. That's that's excessive. I do have a lot of yarn, but maybe not most. <laughs> but I do have a lot of pinks. So speaking of pinks, the very last yarn that I purchased was by Swish Yarns. And this is a self-striping sock yarn. And if you know me, if you've been here before, you can see why I couldn't resist this one. It is absolutely stunning. So yeah some socks on the horizon with this. So not too many acquisitions at the Fiverr Festival, which is good <laughs> because I'm still, oh, and of course, sorry, the last acquisition is obviously the yarn I'm knitting my socks in at the moment and this project bag as well was an acquisition, but I'm using them already. So that's a great start to this year's acquisitions. So that's it for the projects. Now some plans for the next couple of weeks. I have talked about obviously wanting to finish some of my current projects, wanting to knit on my star, not my star, my Stephen West Geo Gradient shawl. So excited to work on that. The colours in that shawl are just so happy for me that I, I really want to get it done and be able to wear it when it gets cooler. So I'm very excited to get that back into rotation again. But in the meantime, I was accepted into a test group, not a test knit, uh, but a test group for a project bag that I will be testing for Patil Knits. Uh, so I'm really super excited about that. I picked up all of the supplies for that yesterday and I'm hoping to get a start on that once I finish this recording. I am running out of daylight today though. Time is fleeting. So that is exciting. I hope to be able to share that project bag with you in the next episode or maybe more than one project bag because I am very excited to sew that up, get my sewing machine dusted off and get that done. And I want to cast in the Sarissa shawl and probably more garments. I'm so itching to knit more garments. Um, I may also be participating in another test knit, but the details of all the timelines of that haven't been confirmed yet. So I'll share that in a future episode as well. So I think that is everything that I was going to talk about today. I have likely forgotten things, but that is the majority and I think I've taken up so much of your precious time already. So uh, to move on to a bit of life stuff, I've already talked about Jane visiting, which was the highlight of the year so far. <laughs> it was really wonderful to have her here. Um, apart from that, we have been busy with our chickens. The chickens have been giving us so much joy and they've started laying eggs. So they laid, one, someone laid their first egg last Sunday. We got our first egg today. Well done, ladies. And we had another egg on Wednesday, another egg on Friday, and then Saturday and today. So we have five eggs so far from our chickens and it is so super exciting. I <laughs> wasn't sure who was laying, so I set up my a spare old phone and a camera into the coop so I could stalk them. <laughs> And I caught one laying her egg today, who I think laid yesterday as well. So Beth, our most advanced leghorn, has laid at least two of those five eggs. I think the other three are by the Australorps, but I'm still not sure who. 
Um, the fact that they haven't laid in the last two days, but they were laying like every second day. I suspect that we might see another one tomorrow. That's a darker color. So traditionally the Australorps will lay brown eggs or at least a darker colored egg. And the Leghorns are meant to lay whitish eggs. And the two eggs that Beth has laid, Beth is our Leghorn, are a lot lighter than the three that we had beforehand so I think it's I think it's one of the Australorps that have laid the first couple unless Beth has laid all of them which is pretty impressive that they've changed so much <laughs> in the last few days but that's been the, another highlight for us it's been very exciting to see that happen and other than that uh, we're just getting ready for Easter next weekend uh, we do celebrate here so uh, that will be nice good chance for a lot of family time and that is probably about it work is crazy work has a lot of deadlines right now uh, we are at quarter one wrap up so there's a lot going on at work right now um, the Australian yarn show is happening at the moment I have been loving seeing everyone's posts on Instagram and living vicariously through those because it looks like a fantastic event unfortunately work timelines and deadlines did not allow me to go this year but hopefully next year that would be amazing to get to Canberra and go to that um, but yeah I'm just thinking what have I been reading and watching reading I finished reading the Iron Flame book that I was uh, reading last episode uh, finished that a couple of weeks ago and started a new to me book by Hannah Kent and it's called Devotion that book was recommended to me by my friend Jane who had read it and I am probably three quarters of the way through that at the moment and it's been really interesting an interesting book it has a it's a bit of a historical fiction focus about the settlement of a town just near me here so i've been really enjoying that it's intriguing <laughs> interesting way of writing now i do want to try some of her other books um there's another one that uh, jane recommended that i can't remember the name of at the moment but I have it in my to read list and I'll probably read that one next. Uh, in terms of watching, I spent last Sunday not feeling great. I had a bit of a migraine, but I did manage to watch a few movies. Um, so I watched the new Millie Bobby Brown movie, Damsel on Netflix. I quite enjoyed that movie. Uh, I I'm really looking forward to the new Stranger Things season coming out at some stage. I understand they're recording right now and I have been itching for that to come out. So I got my fix of Millie Bobby Brown in Damsel, which was nice. And then I watched a couple of other movies. Um, and there was so much more I was going to tell you about and I have gone completely blank now. I've been watching a lot of podcasts as I get ready for work in the morning and as I'm falling asleep on the couch in the evening. <laughs> so getting my fill of all of the podcasts as well, which is nice. And yeah, just wanting to do all the things. I want to knit all the things. I want to bake all the things. I want to play with my chickens. There are not enough hours in the day. So on that note, I might leave that there. I feel like I've rambled a little bit in this episode. Definitely a bit of a slow start to this one uh, that I hope you'll forgive me for being a little rusty. But I have really enjoyed catching up with you and updating you on everything that has been happening here, all of the things that I've been working on. And I hope to see you sooner than this last break has been. The time between episodes was much longer than I had hoped it would be. So I hope to see you sometime by mid-April. I'm aiming for about one, one episode a month, so we'll see how we go with that. I am thinking about recording a week of making video. I have been really enjoying watching the uh, videos that Ali from This Little Wonderful Life, Little Drops of Wonderful YouTube channels. She has two. <laughs> 
uh, has been releasing recently. It's just so nice to sort of see that weak progress and how life gets in the way or does not get in the way of our making depending on the week. So I'm, I am thinking of recording one of those uh, episodes or one of those vlogs. I really do miss the vlogging part. I have taken so much footage over the last few weeks with the anticipation of recording and putting in some b-roll for you all and it makes me miss the vlogging process a lot. So I might look at doing a vlog format in the next few weeks as well. See how we go with uh, life pressure and work pressure to see if that will actually happen. But I look forward to seeing you again soon. I wish you all the very best for your making, your knitting time. As much knitting time as you want would be nice even though life doesn't always allow that. But I hope you are enjoying what you're working on and I will talk to you again next time. <laughs> Bye. And, and, so I got out of two 200 balls, or out of 100 balls, 100 balls, Oh